Hey, Israel, Musan Christ Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah. With me, I have Officer Abraham. Uh, today's topic is going to be uh, be admonished. Be admonished. So give me a definition real quick. All right. Admonish means to warn or reprimand someone firmly. Okay. So being warned. We're warning you of what? Of the making of many books. King Solomon spoke about that, and we're going to get it and get into the lesson. So give me uh, Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. He says, be warned of making many books, there is no end. Right? Go ahead. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Much study of these other books is a weariness of the flesh, meaning it's of no profit to you. Read on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And guess what? You can find out the commandments in the Bible. Okay, it says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay, the whole duty of us on this earth today as Israelites is that we fear God and keep his commandments. That's it. So we have that available right here in the scriptures. Okay, from there, give me uh, Hebrews 13, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, mm -hmm. for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Not it says, it is a good thing that your mind be established with grace in the faith of Christ. We read... King Solomon said, fear God and keep his commandments, and we're to establish that in grace, meaning under Christ. We keep the laws in the faith of Christ. Go ahead. Not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. What you're going to realize is a lot of these other books that the Most High did not set up for us to read, it says what? Have not what? Which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. It have not profited us as a people. Okay. Now, from there, give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So it says, we are not to be like children anymore, tossed to and fro, carried about with what? Every wind of doctrine. Every time a, a new doctrine blows through, now you jump on it. Every time a new book about God comes out, you're jumping on it. Okay, we're not to be like children, tossed to and fro like that, you know? By the slight of men mm -hmm. and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They lie in wait to deceive you, okay? As the Israelites, in just basically keeping the commandments, okay? This walk is simple. Keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. That's it, okay? Read it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine mm -hmm. by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So now, from there, give me Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. The book of the Lord today is called the Bible. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, no one of these prophecies shall fail. Everything that this Bible says is going to happen is going to happen. Read. None shall want her mate. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't mate what the Most High gathered. You can't mate this with any of the books. You can't mate it with the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Gilgamesh epics and so forth. Read on. For my mouth it hath commanded, mm -hmm. and his spirit it hath gathered them. It says, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit, it had gathered them. Gathered them in what? It's a collection of books. Okay, the word biblios, which means a collection of writings. Okay, it says, his spirit have gathered these together. All right, so what we have here, Israel, is enough. From there, give me Daniel chapter nine. Daniel chapter nine. We're gonna get into a couple of these other titles of books that we had at one particular time, and now we don't. Read. Daniel chapter nine, what verse? Uh, let's start at verse 2. Verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, 
whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So we have this particular book, the book of Jeremiah. At this time, Daniel was letting us know that he understood the prophecies that was going to happen to Israel based on the writings of Jeremiah. Read it again. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the, of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Right. So Jeremiah prophesied that Israel would be in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And Daniel read those, those writings and he understood, okay, this is what's taking place at this particular time. The same way we can read now with uh, Moses. He prophesied that we would go into slavery on ships mm -hmm. if we broke the commandments, right? Right. Those things we can literally read about in the scriptures. They were prophecy and, and it became history. All right. From there, give me um, Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Verse 23. Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. Now this is talking about Jesus the Christ. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Come on. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So it's referencing another book that says he shall be called a Nazarene. What you're going to find is this particular passage is not in what we have today as the Bible. It's not there. Okay, some things were prophesied that to happen and it's not there now. Why? We're going to get into that as we get through the lesson. From there, give me um, Joshua chapter 10. And let's start at verse 12. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, Stand thou still upon Gibeon. So this is when he told he, he needed the sun to stand still. In order for them to win this particular war, they needed the daylight to stay in existence, right? We don't. And thou moon in the valley of Ilon. Mm -hmm. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed mm -hmm. until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. So the sun stood still, okay? It didn't basically become night for longer than it normally does, right? We don't. Is it not, is not this written in the book of Jasher? Is it what? Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So now it's referencing what we have as called the book of Jasher. It says, is not this written in the book of Jasher? But guess what? It's also written right here. Mm -hmm. We're reading about it right here in the book of Jasher, right? Mm -hmm. So do we need the book of Jasher to find it out? No. Nope. No, we're reading about it right here. Read it again. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Uh huh? Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Right. So, so now, it, it, we don't? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about the whole day. Right. So we're reading about something in Joshua that references also the book of Jasher. Okay. But we're reading about it in Joshua. So the Most High gave us the history right there. We don't need to go to another book to find it again. All right. Give me First Chronicles real quick. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse uh, 29, verse 29. Now the acts of David, the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer. So now it's referencing the book of Samuel, the seer, right? Come on. And in the book of Nathan, the prophet, the book of what? Nathan, the prophet. So we read about King David and what he did in Samuel, right? Mm -hmm. We read about it in Samuel and kings and so forth. But it's also mentions, mentioning the book of Nathan the prophet, which we don't have today. Read on. And in the book of Gad the seer. We don't have the book called Gad the seer today, right? But we can read about the books of David in Samuel, which is what it referenced, right? Mm -hmm. Read it again. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer. Right, that's what we have first and second Samuel. Okay, read on. And in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer. Right. From there, give me a uh, second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 12. <clears throat> verse 15. Chapter 12, verse 15. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet? So now, here we go again. It's, much, it's mentioning the book of who? Shemaiah the prophet. A book of Shemaiah the prophet. Okay. 
The acts of who? Who we talking about? Rehoboam. Now, do we read about Rehoboam in Kings? Right. Yeah, we read about Rehoboam. We, we know what he did. Okay, read on. And of Edo the seer mm -hmm. concerning genealogies. So now it's mentioning the book of Edo the seer. Okay, come on. And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Okay, so again, we got references of book, the book of Shemaiah the prophet. And what else? Edo the seer. And Edo the seer. So these two books we read about in the Bible is referencing those two books. And those two books reference Rehoboam. Okay, but we also have the history of Rehoboam right here. Okay, what I'm showing y'all is the Most High gave us enough of the history to understand what happened to us. Okay, now from there, give me uh, the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1, verse 14. Jude chapter 1, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So now this is mentioning Enoch. There's a famous book called the book of Enoch. It says what again? Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Now this is mentioning Enoch prophesied. It didn't necessarily say there was a book of Enoch. Not saying that there wasn't, but this is just saying he prophesied. Okay, for example, give me a loop real quick. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. Luke chapter 1, verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, mm -hmm. and she brought forth a son. Uh -huh. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. Now jump down to uh, 67, I believe. Verse 67. Now this is talking about Elizabeth, John's mother, right? Come on. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and, and prophesied. And Zachariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and did what? Prophesied. Uh -huh. Saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So now, it's mentioning Zachariah prophesied. Is there a book of Zachariah that we have? Nope. We don't have that book. It's just letting you know that Zachariah prophesied. Okay? Now we can read about what he prophesied right here. Right here in the book of Luke. Right? Read on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Right. So we read about Zechariah's prophecy right there. Prophesying about Christ's coming. Okay. Now give me 2 Ezra real quick. 2 Ezra chapter 14 verse 21. Um, during, during the time of ancient Babylon and the other nations, um, they were taking our records and burning them. Right. So we're going to read about that right now. 2 Ezra 14, 21. For thy law is burnt, therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee, uh -huh. or the works that shall begin. So Ezra is praying to the Most High. He says, your law is burnt, therefore no man knoweth the things that are what? Done of thee, uh -huh. or the works that shall begin. So no, we don't have a record of the, the prophecies or the history right now. Read on. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me. And I shall write all that hath been done in the world. Ezra said, if I have found favor, send me the Holy Ghost and I'm going to write. I'm going to record those things down. Okay. Read on. Since the beginning, which were written in the law, mm -hmm. that men may find thy path and that they which will live in the latter days may live. So Ezra's prayed. He said, your law is burnt. I need to record those things down that men may do what? Find thy what? Find thy path, uh -huh. and that they which will live in the latter days may live. Why? Because the, the scripture says, uh, what is Proverbs 4? Um, give me Proverbs 4 real quick, about life. That, right. that men may live. So let's find out what gives us life. Read. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my what? My commandments and live. That should be our primary focus once again. Like Solomon said, the, the conclusion is to keep the commandments. All right? Fear God and keep his commandments. This is saying keep my commandments and live. Ezra, let's go back to Ezra. So Ezra wanted to record those things again back down because the Babylonians had burned the records. Okay, read that again. 2 Ezra 14, verse 22. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, 
and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which li will live in the latter days may live. Right, so now give me uh, verse 42. Verse 42. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, mm -hmm. and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told which they knew not. Uh -huh. And they sat 40 days. They said, wait, they said they wrote the what? And they wrote the wonderful visions. They wrote the wonderful visions. Of the night. Uh -huh. That were told which they knew not. They, that they were told which they knew not. A lot of people say, oh, that's, that's man's book. Okay, that's a man's book. Mm -hmm. No man can record these things in this Bible prophetically at all. It can't be done unless the spirit of the Most High is dealing with them. Okay, so it says they wrote things that they knew not. The spirit was dealing with them in order to record these things now. We don't? And they sat 40 days and they wrote in the day and at night they ate bread. It's significant that they sat 40 days because that's how long Moses was also in the mount, right? Right. 40 days, 40 nights. We don't? In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. How many? 204 books. So they wrote 204 books, right? Between the five of them. Read on. Verse 45. And it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish openly. So now, that's what we have today. It's called the Bible. Publish what? Openly? The, the highest space saying, the first that thou hast written, publish openly. Uh-huh. So you can publish these certain books openly to everybody, right? We don't? That the worthy and unworthy may read it. That the worthy and unworthy may read it. All right, go ahead. But keep the 70 last. Keep the who? 70 last. Mm-hmm. That thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. So now, what are we reading about here? There are certain books that they had at this particular time that the Most High did not want everybody to read. Okay? They weren't worthy to read those books. Okay? So he said, keep those off to the side. All right? Don't give those books to everybody. From there, give me Revelation chapter 2. And this is why Christ said what he's about to say right now. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 2. Verse uh, 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. And that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Say it again. But that which ye have already. That which you have already. Hold fast this, till I come. And, and this is what we have right here. We have it already. He said, hold fast till I come. Why would he say that to us? Because there's other things that were out there that we don't have. But guess what? We have enough to make it. That what you have, hold fast till I come. That's what Christ is saying. Read it one more time. Verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So those books like Nathan the prophet, Edo the seer, um, Gad the prophet, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christ said, you don't need that. This what you have, hold fast until I come. Is that it? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. That's the key right there. What you have, hold fast, keep the works until what? Unto the end, uh -huh. to him will I give power over the nations. So guess what? We have enough with these collections of writings to have to overcome our personal sins and whatnot and be given power in the end. We have enough right here. Read it one more time. Verse, uh, first verse 25. Verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right. So give me um, 2 Ezra 4 real quick. 2 Ezra chapter 4. 2 Ezra chapter 4. Verse 50. Verse 50. Then said he unto me, Consider with thyself, as the rain is more than the drops, mm -hmm. and as the fire is greater than the smoke. But the drops and the smoke remain behind. So the quantity which is past did more exceed. Watch this. Then I prayed and said, May I live, thinkest thou, until that time? Or what shall happen in those days? He answered me and said, The angel answered Ezra and said what? As for the tokens whereof thou asked me. The question that you asked me, read. I may tell thee of them in part. Uh -huh. But as touching thy life, I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. The angel said what? I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. The angel told Ezra, the question you asked me, I don't have the answer to it. So wait a minute, the angels in heaven don't have all the answers. Mm. So now we as Negroes and Hispanics on the earth feel like we got to know everything. 
we got to try to delve into all these other writings that the Most High did not set up for us to have. That's why Christ said, what you have, hold fast until I come. The angel is telling Ezra right here, that question, I can't answer. I don't know the answer to that thing. Read it one more time. Verse 52. He answered me and said, as for the tokens whereof thou askest me, I may tell thee of them in part. Mm -hmm. But as So I, I, I can tell you a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. The first part of your question I can tell you, but what? But as touching thy life, what's going to happen to you? I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. So, you know, the word angel means messenger. The Most High sent the angel to give him a particular message. And some of the other questions that he asked him, the angel couldn't answer. It because the Most High didn't give him that information. Okay. Again, the angels don't know certain things. Give me that in Mark. Um, Mark 13, 32. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Go ahead. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Now this is the talking about the second coming of the Messiah. He said of that day. And that hour. And that hour. Knoweth no man. Knoweth no man. No, not the angels which not, are in heaven. So, so wait a minute. The angels don't even know that day. Come on. Neither the son. Wait a minute. Christ himself said he don't even know. Right? Come on. But the father. But the father. The Father knows all things. We, we don't have all the answers today, and we're not going to have all the answers. Just like Christ didn't have all of them, the angels didn't have all of them. All, the only thing we sit, sit here to do is fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Read that one more time. Verse 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now, give me 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13 now. So now we're getting some understanding that, okay, Christ himself didn't know everything, okay? The angels didn't know everything. We as mere mortals on this earth, we're not going to know everything. All right, read. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Read on. But when that which is perfect is come. That's some of Christ. When Christ comes back. Then that which is in part shall be done away. When, when Christ comes back, that which is in part shall be done away. Meaning the things that we don't know, the things we don't understand, they're going to be revealed unto us at that particular time. Okay, so yeah, what, what happened to the book of Gad the Seer or Edo the prophet or Nathan the prophet and so forth? Mm -hmm. What happened to these particular writings, Christ? It says what? Then that which is in part shall be done away. That which is in part shall be done away. We're going to have those answers at that particular time. Is that it? Yeah. So, hey, Israel, uh, Lord willing, y'all got something out of the lesson, but these other writings and whatnot is not necessary for us to make it into the kingdom. Don't kill yourself. Read, go back to Ecclesiastes one more time. Don't kill yourself trying to dig into these other writings because they're not set up for us to uh, be delving into at this particular time. Okay, those writings, they have contradictions in them and so forth. Read. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And further by these, my son, be admonished. For making many books, there is no end. Uh -huh. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Uh -huh. So now, give me uh, last scripture. Give me um, Exodus real quick. No, matter of fact, Acts. Give me Acts. Acts chapter 7, uh, start at 22. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians uh -huh. and was mighty in words and in deeds. Read on. And when he was full 40 years old, it came to, into his heart to visit his brethren. It says when Moses was a full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren. When you delve into some of these other books like Jasher, for example, it's a contradiction. It tells you that he was like 18 years old when he went to visit his, his brethren or whatnot. 18 and 40. That's, that don't add up, right? Huge difference. Huge difference. Read it again. And, it, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Right. So like I said, a lot of times these other books, they have contradictions, things in them that don't line up to what the Most High gave us today. All right. So give me Revelations 2, 25 one more time. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already... Hold fast till I come. Come on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right. So that's what we're sitting here to do, Israel, is hold fast what the Most High gave us 
So with that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.